All right, all right, all right. This is going to need numbers. You know, this is going to need a mass movement of, of a, a, a whole lot of people. It's going to need something like, more like what we saw with the Bernie movement, mm-hmm. what we saw with the George Floyd protests. You know, that's, yeah. that's the kind of numbers and the kind of energy this is going to need. And so, and so we come to the question, you know, why isn't that happening? Why, don't we, why, why aren't we seeing those kind of numbers in that movement happening right now? And one of the things I would posit is just our, our movement, whatever it is, isn't, isn't organized. I mean, there's, and this is why I think it needs a, a set of demands. And it doesn't have to be my demands or your demands or whatnot, but it needs something. But for instance, if we're having a left movement, we don't even have a name for it. We don't even know, what, what do you call our movement? What kind of left are we? You know, the, the Jimmy Dore left, the... the the post-democratic mm-hmm. left and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What if, you know, as a, a potential idea, what if we are the 11 demands left? Mm-hmm. What if that's, because branding, I mean, branding is one of those things that it, it's kind of a thing that feels very commercial and whatnot, but branding is important. That's <laughs> true. Branding make, makes the difference between mm-hmm. whether, you know, people remember something and catch on to it or not. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think we're going to have to figure out some way to say this is who we are. This is what we represent and come join us. And here's here's why you would check out these demands. Well, it sounds like you're saying to use the capitalistic forces against itself. Right. Uh, it's basically saying use these different um, use these different tenants that capitalists use in order to increase their wealth to instead increase the demands or increase the amount of things that are necessary for us to have at least a a foundation and using it against the capitalistic forces and so because you're using the apparatus against them they may not like it but they're the ones that put that apparatus in place in the first place and so it's basically just using it for our ends versus using it for their ends yeah, I mean, you know, these people are inherently greedy. You know, if if there was some way that we could use their greed to to fight against each other, that that would be good. You know, as as for um as for having like you know some kind of identity, I, I don't know what that'll look like in the future, but I think it's really important to try to build this kind of leftist solidarity because I think that there's constantly uh, forces uh, coming in to to do you know, damage to the to the community. I mean, they would want nothing more than our leftist um, community to start eating each other. You know, that that's essentially what oh, they're they've been doing do. that. <laughs> right. I mean, like, like, for yeah. example, like progressive, that's that's not even that that's compre- progressive is completely co opted at, at that point that that, you know, term, in my opinion, it has just been uh, bastardized. I mean, really, would it even ha- warrant us to even have the word left in the name? Because it's going to take a coalition of people that aren't even left in order for this to grow. So uh, that could be somewhat of a turnoff to people versus, say, just worker. You know what I mean? I'm just that's a good point. Yeah, we, we have to it's we have to get out of left to right and and get into up down. Yeah. So it's basically using the tenets of leftism, Marxism, socialism communism using those tenants without actually using the words like for instance a couple of year, a couple of weeks back i was speaking to one of the drivers that drives me to and from dialysis and i was referring to her talking about the things that she has to deal with as a worker as a driver for that company and i basically said it would be awesome it would be great if you as one of the drivers was also a owner part owner of the company not only did were you part owner but you also got the 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 profits part of the profits that you earned from your labor and you also had a democratic say on how the company is ran and she fully signed on to that immediately and there are so many people when you explain it in that way then they go because that means it's like you don't have to do entrepreneurship that that individualistic way you can do entrepreneurship in a collective way and you can collectively own 
and collectively make the profits for the company that you work for because you're literally helping create the wealth. And when people are brought to that, then the wheels start turning and they start thinking, well, yeah, if we have this, then we can own it. And then we can own it, then we won't be so quick to ship our jobs overseas. And then on top of that, you know, we can have more worker centered policies through our local state and national government. So it the wheels start turning a lot more, but I think one of the things that has to happen is an education work in order for people to know this. And it's just, it's kind of hard to do it one conversation at a time, though I think it's absolutely necessary. I think a mass dissemination of information also needs to happen. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think we should do it all. I mean, you know, I, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. And this is something we do sometimes on the left is we get caught up in the idea of, oh, no, we got to be doing it this way. And, oh, no, we got to be doing it this way. What mm -hmm. I'm proposing is a left movement with a list of, of, of coherent, specific demands at its core mm -hmm. that informs and that guides everything we do. So if, so if you're if you're having a conversation with someone, well, look at these demands and look down here. Here's this one about worker co-ops that applies yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you ask anybody, do you think Congress is corrupt? <laughs> Get a ninety-nine percent yes. Well, here's the number one demand. You know, yeah. deal with the money. You're gonna, yeah. you know, and and clean the sewer up. At the same time, there's all our, all our the whole online presence. And, and these shows that can reach out to thousands, mm -hmm. millions, and and you know that's that's kind of what has brought us here, you know, to yeah. this point, mm -hmm. and all that definitely needs to be leveraged. But I'm I'm proposing we do all the things, and we not mm -hmm. get caught up in, in you know, oh well, it's this one or this one. I even, I I even get a, I I I like to, I think about pushing back even when there's the discussion of like how much energy to put into mutual aid versus. Um, electoral politics, you know, should mm -hmm. it be 50, 50, should it be 80, 20 and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And what I'm proposing is more just to, to not even view it as that kind of competition, but mm -hmm. view it in terms of do both of the things, do all the things mm -hmm. and, and do it together as a movement, but mm -hmm. it's going to have to have something at its core. Yeah. The only issue that I see is that a lot of movements get co-opted. And for that very reason, there is some folks that would feel like they're on board. And some may be on board initially from the outset. But once they get into a particular political party, then that's when things get influenced and then things get cut down. People may get demoralized, just like with the Bernie movement. A lot of people were on board for a lot of these different policies, but it just didn't happen. And now people seem to have just fallen back to sleep. So in what ways can we do in order to keep the movement from being co-opted by some of these lapdogs for the oligarchs? And some of them become lapdogs for oligarchs too. Yeah. So, and I'm gonna like, say, how do we prevent that? Well, what I'm gonna say, what demands? Go, Corey. Well, yeah, what I have to say <laughs> is, is any any movement, any party, um, you know, I, 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 I am a little bit suspicious of, of any kind of like political party. I, I do vote, but I, I don't vote for any major party. I only vote for third party. Uh, ideally, what I want to see is independent candidates. Um, but but what I what I would say is I am very cautious of any movement or any party that is centered around personalities or, or one particular personality. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I ideally this should be a collective where uh, we're we're looking at each other as, as equals. Um, we're, we're having that class solidarity. And it's, you know, with within our community, it, it's democratic. It's it's like the same theory of a co-op business. You know, we, we all have a say, we all have a vote. So w without saying anything specific, my, my thing was, is if you have a movement that's centered around one person or one group of people, um, I think that's where you can really get co-opting. If it is that true collective, I think mm -hmm. it is harder to do that. Yeah, I, I kind of want to think back to 
during the activist summit when we had on Shama Sawant on RBN, and one of the things that was conveyed to us was when it comes to choosing someone to run for a particular office, whether it be local, state, or national, they actually vote on who they want. A person does not make the conscious effort, oh, I'm going to run because I feel that we need this. It's like, no, the people gather together and they make their choice of who they want. And the person may be reluctant to do it, which is a good thing because that means that they actually don't really want that power. They just feel like, okay, the people chose me. And even in the choosing, it is not up to that person. And they have to look at the person's circumstance and things like that, of course. But it comes to a point where it's not up to the individual if they run or not. It's up to the collective of who runs and who gets pointed. You know, and the people who feel like, oh, I should or I should, you look at that person with a side eye, you're like, mm, maybe not, because you're too ambitious. Yeah, you know? Definitely. And so definitely. You, you need the movement first. You yeah. Need, you need the collective first. And then ideally, you have the leaders rising out of that.